Hey card making friends, welcome back. It's Sandy McIver here and today's collaboration stamp set between Simon Says Stamps and Sweet and Sassy is called Have Faith and I'm going to do a triple time stamping with a resist technique, a combination of the two techniques in one with this pretty stamp set. I'm going to be doing some heat embossing and some ink blending to make this magic pop. We're going to start off with the pieces that we need. There's six pieces. You need three on the left hand side that create the art piece and then you need three on the right hand side that make the mat. And I have got the measurements there on the cards for you. Uh, if you can't really see them or you need further instructions, pop over to my blog. There is a link to it underneath this video. So we're starting with the art pieces and these guys are two by three and a quarter three by four and a quarter and four by five and a quarter. I'm putting some removable adhesive on the back of each one of the pieces and I'm stacking them. Okay, so we're going to start by using Versamark and white embossing powder. And so pay close attention to where my hand is because you're not gonna be able to see the stamped image until we start to do the ink blending. Um, which is unfortunate, but <laughs> there's no other way to do this technique. So I'm going to start with the sentiment and I'm going to stamp it in the bottom right hand corner of the center small piece of the stack. I'm using a brand new Versamark ink pad. It's really juicy and you'll see I'm also taping the piece down to my uh, graph paper using my little rabbit there to get rid of any sticky fingerprints and we're going to start stamping. So again, the sentiment right side up, of course, making sure that it's really inked up and stamping it straight down and rubbing hard. I'm on a really, really smooth, hard work surface. There's no warping. I've got the flower now and you'll see I'm in the bottom left-hand corner and I'm going all the way to the edge. So I've actually covered all three of the pieces of cardstock doing the same thing over on the right hand side a little bit above where the sentiment is and I'm re-inking each time. I'm stamping off the top corner and I'm going to do the same thing on the top left corner except the whole flower is on this time. You don't want them all at the same level or all in the same place. You want them extremely abstract. It makes the card more interesting. So I'm just working my way around and I have all of that part of the stamping done. So gently pick it up, trying not to remove uh, any of the tape. You want to maintain this stack until we're completely finished. Covering with white embossing powder, shaking off the excess, and we're going to heat set this little guy. I'm pretty sure you're not gonna be able to see this yet, but I'm giving it a try anyway. <laughs> I'm going to change out my stamps and I'm going to take that little stem of leaves and I'm going to actually move that to the smaller of the handles. I like that handle better. Okay, and we're going to do the same thing, but we're going to fill in around the flowers with the leaves. So again, I had some fingerprints on there, so I'm using my little bunny to get rid of those. I am stamping the leaves all the way around the outside edge of the card, going in between the flowers. Of course, I can see them because they're heat embossed now, but you can't, you'll see them shortly. And I have a little bit of black ink on my leaf stamp, so you can see that in a couple of spots as well. Hopefully my white embossing powder is gonna cover that. Okay, again, covering with the white embossing powder and shaking off the excess before we heat set it. And that's the end of the heat setting. So you can put your embossing powder away. Next. Next, we're going to color in our images. I'm going to use Copic markers. The uh, teals are BG11, BG13, BG49. The greens are YG03, YG17. And I'm starting with the YG17. I'm going light, or sorry, dark to light on these. And this is really, really simple, just using two quick colors and putting a little tiny bit of the green at the bottom of each of the stems and then coming back with the YG03 and flooding each of the areas. And I know again, still you cannot see my images because they're white on white, but the magic is gonna happen shortly, I promise. Okay, so I'm just zipping around and coloring all of these in. 
And this just adds a little bit of contrast and interest to the card and it breaks up all of the blue. So you do kind of need a little bit of the green. Or you could do flowers different colors. That would be pretty too. I wanted to kind of keep the coloring to a minimum for the video. Okay, and the last set of leaves. Coloring them in. Don't press too hard because of course embossing powder it has little sharp edges and it will tear up the tick of your marker if you uh, consistently push too hard on it. If you're just gentle, uh, it should be just fine. I've colored lots of things that have been heat embossed with my markers and they're just fine. Okay, so we're moving on to the teals. So I started with the dark one, which is the BG49, and then I did a couple of strokes with the BG13, and now I'm filling in each of the flower petals with the BG11. And I'm only going to color one of these flowers just to show you how I did it. The rest I'm going to do off camera. Otherwise, we need to add a half an hour to this video. <laughs> okay, and again, I'm not spending a lot of time blending. Um, this is more about the layering and the overall design more than, you know, getting really into coloring. So here are my finished pieces. I'm all finished my coloring. I'm very gently going to pull these apart. If you didn't use uh, the right adhesive, you may have a little bit of problem there, so be careful pulling it apart. I am using a Simon Says Stamps Positively Ink in Seafoam and a blending brush. And look, here's where the magic happens. This is where all that white embossing starts to pop up on your card as you add ink. The resist technique resists the ink where you have heat embossed and it's popping that white border up. Isn't it pretty? Where do we stack them? It's just gorgeous. So you want to go all the way around each of the three pieces, adding your ink blending in. You don't need to do the centers because they're going to be glued together and nobody's going to see them. Okay. Just working my way around the last one. And then there's a couple of tips on taping these together because there's one piece, this one right here, that you've got to be very careful about which way you put it onto your card base because the mat for this one is the card base. Okay, so get a nice even blend all the way around. And we are going to layer these back up. So you want to line up the flowers and the leaves. And as you can see, that one doesn't work very well. And you want to do this before you start gluing everything together. There's a reason for it. Okay, so we want it that way up. Cool. Now, I like to do this first part first. I'm going to take the largest piece and I'm going to tape it first to my card base because I want to make sure I get it the right side up because your card only opens one way. So if you put this on upside down, it's gonna mess up the entire card. So add some adhesive to the back and then again, you want to double check to make sure that everything's lining up properly because you get one go at this and you're going to center this on your card base. And this is a top folding A2 size card, so it's four and a quarter by 11, score and folded at five and a half. So now these pieces can be added to their mats. Each, each of the mats is a quarter of an inch bigger than the actual art piece. And popping this one together. And now what we're going to do is we're going to add some foam tape to the back of each one of these because we want them to stand up a little bit and pop out. And I don't know if you noticed while we were doing the ink blending, but there are some halos from where we stamped over the edge when we were doing the stack. That's why we mask matte with the white that covers any of the little halos. Okay, so I've got my tape on the back and now I'm lining these up and I'm stacking them back onto the actual card. Sometimes these little things on the back are so hard to get off. <laughs> I find a pokey tool works quite well. And there we go, whoops. There's an edge of a piece of foam sticking up, so I just wanted to bend that to the back. Okay, and again, take a minute and line it up, and there we go. A little bit of embellishing just around the sentiment and I'm using the Spellbinders Aquamarine Color Essential Gems. I love these things. I think I need to order 10 at a time. And I just put three little jewels around the sentiment. 
For the card on the left, I used sequins, and it was flowering clover sequins from Simon Says Stamps. So everything I've used today is listed underneath my video. There's also a link over to my blog where you can get all the measurements for all the pieces for today's card. And uh, this is a exclusive stamp set, uh, only available while supplies last because it's part of Stamp Timber. So hope you enjoyed my video today. If you did, please consider giving me a thumbs up and and stick around. Here's a couple more videos I found that I thought you might find interesting. Until next time, thanks for stopping in. Bye now.